welcome to the course on drone systems and control this is a continuation of lecture 9 and tutorial 3 uh, here we will see the matlab demonstration of kalman filtering and extended kalman filtering one by one okay so to start with uh, we see that uh, we have gone through the kalman filtering lectures and we have seen that when we talk about the actual algorithm of kalman filter it consists two uh, important steps one is prediction and another is correction or updation and then the particular step keeps on uh, going uh, with iterations number of iterations so we repeat the steps for uh, kind of uh, number of times and then we get the predicted values and estimated values right so at each time step what happens the kalman filter performs two main operations to estimate the system state so the estimation of uh, the states are the main function of kalman filter we have seen that the first one is called prediction step or time update where we have uh, when the uh, system equation is something which we have uh, then uh, from that we can uh, we have the state equations from the state equations what we uh, come for the state prediction uh, step is that it predicts the state at k time, time step given the values at k minus 1 that means the previous time step and by that it uh, computes this value then also the covariance prediction what uh, is done with the covariance uh, given the previous time steps like this q is the process noise and what happens in the prediction state it projects the previous state forward in time using the system dynamics what are the previous states at kth step the previous step is xk minus 1 right and uh, what is the previous step covariance it is pk minus 1 at the time step k right so um, then what it does it uh, like incorporates the process noise q into it process noise comes from the uh, problems or errors that happen in the plant itself in our case it is the drone so that is the process noise it uh, incorporates the process noise like this this particular step now what happens the next step is the updation step where first the innovation uh, vector is calculated uh, like this then innovation covariance is calculated like this then we compute kalman gain or kalman filter gain which is uh, the contribution from re kalman so we we'll do it like this then this kalman gain is used to update the state estimation and uh, update the covariance in this particular way and it keeps on going keeps on repeating as much time as we need we have to specify the time accordingly so finally we get the state estimate and the prediction right so uh, in correction step what we do it corrects the predicted state using the new measurement information right so this particular uh, step has the new measurement information and that gets generalized into the system or at the algorithm and it reduces uncertainty by balancing the model and sensor reliability okay so uh, in the last lecture we have seen uh, the implementation of Kalman filtering uh, with um, MATLAB code. So, here we will just have a basic brush up of that code and then finally, I will go for the implementation of extended Kalman filter. Okay. So, this is an example of Kalman filtering where we see that uh, we design a steady state filter using the Kalman command then we simulate the system to show how it reduces error from measurement noise okay and this example also shows how to implement a time varying filter but we will not go into that this particular file will be shared with you so that you can go through you can write your own code depending on uh, this particular uh, mlex file uh, the materials will be shared with you okay so we have the state equations we have the measurement equations right after that the goal is to design a kalman filter to estimate a true plant output okay what is that the actual or uh, estimated 
uh, thing is what is the true output is y t n and that is y n minus v n. What is v n? v n is the measurement noise. Okay. This steady state Kalman filter uses equations like this which we have gone through in our lecture. Now, we design the Kalman filter. We have to first specify the state equation. Right. So, state equation means we have the um, we have to specify the matrix A, B, C and D. Right. So, in this particular code it is written like this these are the state equations after that uh, we go to the time update state which is written like this and I have also shown in the slides uh, then we have the measurement update. Okay. So, here um, we specify the system with uh, a command SS which you will be seeing in the lecture on lecture and MATLAB demonstration on state variable analysis in control which is the next module. So, the process noise covariance we have to mention because that will capture the plant error. We have to talk about the measurement noise covariance which captures the measurement error or sensor error. Okay. Then we can use the Kalman command to design the Kalman filter. Uh, it is done by this Kalman KLMF uh, then L M X Z all this text Kalman which is the system system is represented by the state space equation then Q and R. Okay. Now, this command designs the Kalman filter uh, which is a state space model that implements the time update and measurement update equations. Okay. The filter inputs are plant input u and uh, noisy plant output y. How, why the plant output is noisy? It is because of the process noise. Uh, sorry, it is because of the measurement noise. The first output of Kalman filter is the estimate y hat of the true plant output and the remaining outputs are the state estimates. Okay. So, this is the block diagram of Kalman filter. Uh, for this example, uh, this is the command which is being used. Now, how to use the filter? You see, uh, what is the basic concept of Kalman filter? We have the plant and this plant has certain control input u, but this plant is contaminated with some process noise which is represented by w. Right? Now, this particular plant when we get the output that is actually the true output of the system, but what happens when we measure it there will be some sensor error which is represented by v or sensor noise and then finally, we get the output. So, the Kalman filter uses that particular output which is contaminated by the measurement noise and also incorporates process noise before uh, in plant it uses and then finally, gives the predicted output y right fine. So, to simulate this system uh, certain uh, wait yes uh, codes or commands of MATLAB are used like uh, we in this particular thing we use a code sum block to create an input for the measurement noise here right. Then use to connect to the system that is the plant and the Kalman filter together such that u is shared input uh, for both the plant and the Kalman filter and the noisy plant output y feeds into the other filter input that means the Kalman input. So, Kalman filter has uh, two inputs one is uh, the noisy uh, plant output y and another is the actual control input. So, with that the result is uh, simulated these are the input names then we have Kalman filter inputs uh, whatever we give as u and y as I have just mentioned. Now, um, we name Kalman filter output as y e which uh, like uh, incorporates the estimate of y we cannot get the true value. So, we are estimating it then this is the simulation model. Okay. So, to simulate the filter behavior uh, generate a known sinusoidal input vector and that is uh, so for that we need to specify that for how much time the input will be there prevailing into the system 
and then this is the control input u okay now we generate the process noise and sensor noise vectors using the same noise covariance values q and r so we specify the seed then we uh, specify the process noise the measurement noise and finally we simulate the output what is going to be the output of the or response uh, from this this particular command okay so this command lsim generates the response at the output yt and ye so yt is the true output and ye is the estimated output to the inputs applied at w v and u so what are the entire system inputs these are process noise w measurement noise v and actual input u okay and the outputs the plant output is yt that is the true output and ye is the kalman filter output that is the estimation of the true output okay so we write things like this we get uh, two outputs so output one is yt output two is ye that is the filtered response or estimated response then we get the measured response by adding the measurement noise v okay we can uh, after that we can plot the responses by using these commands like subplot to uh, divide the plot in a grid format or in different windows and then we can plot the responses whatever we want to plot right okay so if we see this particular example we'll see that uh, we have a this blue line what the legend is blue is the true estimation uh, sorry the true output true output of the filter uh, sorry the true, uh, true output of the plant and the red one is the filtered output that means the response of the kalman filter okay so we see that kalman filter tries to estimate the true output okay now when we plot the error then we see that somehow kalman filter tries to track the plot and the error and that is what the performance is now how we can improve the performance of kalman filter in the lecture itself we have talked about high q low q high r low r so it becomes a perspective where we have to tune the kalman filter in such a way so that we get the desired performance right so this is about the kalman filter now uh, what is the summary we see that when we have to write the code for kalman filter we have to initialize the system we have to initialize the states we have to initialize the covariance matrices then there will be a uh, iteration of two steps number of iterations of two steps one is uh, the um, first step that is the prediction and then the second one is the correction the prediction and correction one by one goes in iteration and finally what we get is the filtered output or uh, the um, output of the kalman filter or estimated output so that is what um, we have to do when we are uh, writing the code itself we have to specifically uh, code or write down in the code about the values which we are choosing for the initial values then the covariance matrices finally we have to write a loop for the iteration of the uh, prediction and correction steps of kalman filter and finally we get it in order to check the performance of the kalman filter what we have to do we have to plot the system response and the filtered response then we can ver uh, like verify whether the kalman filter is working better if it is not giving a de very desired performance what we want to see or how we want to estimate the states if it is not coming close to accuracy then we have to tune uh, the process noise and measurement noise uh, covariance matrices accordingly so that finally we get the proper response what we want okay so a tuning part uh, might be very necessary uh, which we are uh, exclusively not covering in this particular lecture but the readers are encouraged to go through different uh, reading materials of tuning of kalman filter and then uh, can write codes for uh, a kalman filter or extended kalman filter for drone, for drone systems okay thank you